Hello, today we are going to learn about central forces and conic sections. Uh, so we had seen about central forces and the various formulas that are involved, the one above, the one below. Uh, we had also learned about abs and upsidal distance, but if you take a look at nature, okay, particularly uh, astronomy, okay, where you have planets revolving around the sun, uh, most of the orbits that are under central forces, uh, they are conic sections. Okay, so that is what we are going to do today. We will see the link between central forces and conic sections, okay, through uh, a question. Okay, but before doing that, uh, we need to have uh, some basic idea about conic sections that we had learned in, uh, okay, in lower classes. So we have the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. We also have the circle, but that can be easily dealt with. So that is why I'm writing only for the three of them. Okay, so we have these formulas E, which is the eccentricity, it's equal to this, equal to 1, and it's greater than 1. For the ellipse, it's less than 1. We have the semi latest rectum is L equal to B squared by A, in particular for the ellipse and the hyperbola. So these equations, all of them also you will have to remember. We also have the polar equation. The polar equation is in fact common for all the three. L by R equal 1 plus E cos theta okay so the polar equation it can be de derived if you need a derivation for this one feel free to use the comment section and we also have the pedal equation uh, which is b square by p square equal 2a by r minus 1 p square equal l r for the parabola and for the hyperbola we are having two pr equations or the pedal equations which is b square by p square 2a by r plus 1 and for the far branch, b squared by b squared equal 1 minus 2a by r. Uh, the polar equation and this pedal equation, or sometimes they used to call it as the PR equation. Okay, particularly p and r, because p and r, they are involved. Okay, so these equations for these connects have been derived by using the pole as the focus and the initial line uh, as the axis okay so when when the center of the force okay since we are dealing with central forces when the sen uh, when the when the force when the central force is at the pole okay then we can use these equations okay when the when the central force is not at the pole okay it's not at the focus then we cannot use these equations keep that in mind so these equations can only be used in our problems only when the central force is at the pole okay that is the focus okay when the pole is somewhere else we cannot use them so keep that in, that in mind okay uh, again if you need uh, a derivation for this okay you can uh, feel free to uh, to comment okay then maybe i can respond okay with some text pdf or anything all right so with that being said these formulas you will need to remember okay and we are going to use them a lot in particularly when dealing with questions in central forces okay so let us just jump ahead to the first question okay particularly okay let's see And just to have a, but before that, okay, just just to have a clear idea of what we are actually doing over there. Why do we have two equations for the hyperbola? Why only one for the uh, for the ellipse and the parabola? Just think of it in this way, okay? You have the ellipse, okay? Something, okay? Let me draw it properly, okay? So you have the ellipse, and you have a parabola. And also you are having uh, this one, okay, the hyperbola, something like this. Okay, so for, for the ellipse, the focus is present somewhere over here. It is not the center, the center is somewhere else. The ellipse has two focus, two full C, okay. The parabola has one focus over here. And the hyperbola, again, it has two 
Okay, so what we are doing over there, okay, we are uh, we are setting the pole as the focus. Okay, so we are setting the pole as the focus. So that is why this one will be your R and this one will be your theta. Okay, similarly, if the particle maybe is somewhere over here, okay, then okay then similarly we, we can draw similarly over here okay what is r what is theta okay can, can be easily uh, found okay uh so similarly over here okay you can have this one as r this one as theta okay similarly over here okay so we are setting the center of force over here at the focus okay so we can set them here or here it doesn't matter the equation doesn't change or we just have to do a bit of modifications all right so and what is p remember that p is the length of the perpendicular to the tangent okay the length of the perpendicular from this point to the tangent okay so you will have to draw a, a, a tangent okay and over here already looks like this perpendicular so p will be equal to r okay just uh, take a look at this okay so sometimes what that happen is okay the particle maybe somewhere here okay if the particle is somewhere over here and if you draw a tangent it will look something like this then if you have this one will be your r because the particle is here but if you have to find what p is then you will have to draw the perpendicular from this pole to this tangent so this one will be p all right so that is what is happening similarly over here okay if you notice that for the ellipse it's only one single curve okay for the parabola we also have only one single curve that is why we will have only one pedal equation for this and only one pedal equation for this but as for the for the hyperbola for this hyperbola we are having two different curves if if the focus if the pole is over here then this one will be called as the near branch and this one will be called as the far branch that is why we have a different a pr equation for this near branch and we have a different equation for the far branch okay so i hope that is clear again if you need the derivations uh, may maybe i'll just post a link in the comment section okay so with that being said let us just jump ahead to the question that we are going to do today so a particle is describing an ellipse of eccentricity about the center of force at a focus. Okay, so if you take a look at the question, okay, particularly the first part, the first paragraph, you will notice that we don't have any idea of what the force is. Okay, so maybe uh, let us try to find out what the force is. And also I should uh, let you know over here that we can either use uh, polar equations or pedal equations. Okay, if you are using polar equations, if you are using polar equations, then you will have to use the first equation, first equation below. The first equation, because it involves u, u is equal to 1 by r and theta. Whereas if you are using pedal equations, then you will be using equation number 2. Okay, f equal h square by pq dp dr. Okay so, okay, so let us first try to find out what the force is. Okay, so over here, we have a choice, okay, whether we want to use polar or pedal equations. Any you can use, okay, but for this example, let us try to use the pedal equation, okay, the PR equation of ellipse. Okay, we have seen what it is. It is B square by P square equal 2A by R minus 1. Okay, so this one will be your first equation. Okay, so if we have to find the force, okay, we can forget about the question, we can forget about anything, let us just try to find out the force. Okay, if we have to find the force, you notice that we will have to use number two. So that is why we will first have to find dp dr. That is why we will differentiate this one with respect to r. Okay, differentiate it with respect to r so that we will get dp dr. And if you differentiate the constants, you can easily take them outside. DDR 
p square you can write it as p power minus 2 and 2a you can take it outside of the differentiation of r minus 1 differentiation of constant it's equal to 0 okay so this one if you find out you will be having this minus 2p square okay oh, sorry minus 2 by p cube okay if you find out you will be having this and over here you will be having 2a minus 1 by r square so this is what you will be having after differentiating which you can cancel okay minus 2 okay so you will be having b square by and over here you will be having dp dr okay i almost forgot about it. b square by p cube dp dr it will be equal to a by r square so therefore dp dr it will be equal to a p cube divided by uh, b square r square okay but uh, re remember okay how is okay so so what we will do now okay since we have found out the force of what it is okay now let us just try to find out what is f okay what is f okay so we have finished differentiating now let us find out what f is okay maybe i'll use this one as equation two Okay, therefore f equal h square by p cube dp dr okay by using 2 okay uh, this equation 2 below but again we can use dp dr to substitute it over there h square by p cube and dp dr which is a p cube divided by b square r square Okay, when doing this, okay, you will notice that p cube and p cube will get cancelled. So you will be having a h square upon b square, 1 by r square. Okay, so h, if you remember it, it's always a constant. We had uh, done that in the first class. So this whole thing will become a constant. Okay, a and b, they are fixed. So you will be having something like this, mu 1 by r square. Okay, or you can easily write it as mu by r square, where mu a h square upon b square. And also you notice that this one, it is greater than zero. Okay, it is greater than zero since a and b, they are uh, greater than zero. They are lengths and h square is also greater than zero. Okay, so, so with that being said, Okay, now let us just see what do we have to find. Okay, so we have to find h square. So mu equal a h square by b square. Okay, I'll write it down again. Okay, so keep this one as equation 3. Okay, so what I can do next is... Uh, I will have to find out what h square and what is v square. Okay, let's try to do it. Okay, so over here h square, it will be mu b square upon a. Okay, if we have to use the eccentricity. Over here we are still doing about ellipse. Okay, so the eccentricity e. Okay, if you remember we had discussed uh, in the beginning. It will be equal to root over a square minus b square upon a okay in other words a e whole thing square it will be equal to a square minus b square so b square it will be equal to a square plus a square e square that is why over here b square you can replace it with something like this okay you can keep this one to the side and you can write it here so you will be having mu a square 1 plus e square uh, so sorry it will be a square minus okay it will be minus 
1 minus e square upon a, which gives you mu a 1 minus e square. So if you notice the question, okay, let's hope that is what we want to find. Yes. Okay, so if you see the question over there, h squared is equal to mu a 1 minus e square. Okay, so we are done. Okay, now we need to find v. Hello. So we have managed to find h, okay, according to the question, uh, according to this question. Now we need to find what v is. And if you notice, we need v squared equal mu 2 by r minus 1 upon a. Okay, so, so far what we had done. Okay, we had used the equation of the ellipse, that is this first equation. We had found what the force is. We have got it to be mu by r square. And we have got the value of mu to be a h square by v square. Okay, so now we need to find v square. Okay, v. Okay, if we have to do that, uh, which equation below do you think we will have to use? Okay, naturally we have, will have to use equation 4. Okay, now equal pv okay so h is equal to pv uh, but h okay but remember that in the question we need to find v square so that's why we can square both sides okay you can actually name this one as star okay for this equation i remember it was equation one for this one it was equation three and this one you can name it as star value of mu Okay, so h square from mu or from star, it will be equal to mu v square upon a equal p v square. Sorry, it will be p square v square. Okay, so this is what we can do. Okay, or we can write p square equal mu v square upon a v square. Okay, uh, we can name this one as equation uh, 5. Okay, equation 4, let me just write it down. The equation 4, we have got the value for mu, which was, okay, equation 4, it is this one, mu a, 1 minus e squared, okay. So this one will be your equation 5. Now, we need to find v squared. Okay, we need to find v squared, so what we will do, we will substitute this one over here. Okay, or actually this one we can uh, write it better. Okay, because if you notice equation one, it is in the form b square by p square. So that is what we will write. b square a upon mu. So this is what we can do. So we can substitute it in one. If we substitute in equation one, we will be having v square a upon mu equal to a by r minus 1 or v square equal mu okay we can divide by a we will get 2 by r minus 1 upon a okay so this is what we are getting and this one will be your equation uh, 5 okay maybe I don't need this one anymore so this is what I will write it down okay maybe I'll just I'll, I'll just write it down okay in case we do need it Okay, so this one will be equation 5, equation 6. I am keeping a note of all the equations that I'm getting because as you see, in these questions, a lot of equations are involved. Okay, so I'll just keep note. This is equation 5. And equation 6, it's this. Okay, so also when you are doing your the problems, okay, maybe a different problem, you will always have to keep note of the equations that you got. So we have got the formula for the velocity, which is this one. So we are done with the first part of the question. Now let us just take a look at the second part of the question, what it asks us to find. Okay, so when the particle is at one end of the minor axis, its velocity is double. Okay, so let us keep in mind for that. Okay, so what we are having, we were having an ellipse. Okay, so this is the major axis. This is the minor axis. The force, okay, the center of force, which is given by this one, it's at the focus. Okay, so now the particle is at a minor axis. So it's somewhere over here. Let's name this point as B. 
Okay, so if we draw a tangent, why exactly do we draw a tangent? Because we are using PR equations. If we are using PR equations, you will need to find this perpendicular distance. So for this ellipse, this length is A, so this one is also A, and this one is B. So this perpendicular distance, it is B. And this point over here, it is situated at a distance A. Okay, it may not look according to scale, but this is actually what is happening for an ellipse because this one is the focus. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now we need to first to find the velocity at B and then we will double it. So at B, at B what is happening? Okay, at B, uh, R. Okay, R will be equal to A. It is situated at the distance A from the center of force. So therefore, VB squared, it will still be given by this formula, 2 by A minus 1 by A, which is equal to uh, mu upon A. So this is what is happening. So therefore, VB, it's equal to root over mu upon A. Okay, but then what is happening after we find out the velocity, we know that it will be double. Okay, so therefore new velocity, therefore the new velocity, it will be VB dash, it will be double of VB. Okay, I'll just write it down over here, since now we are dealing with new, uh, okay, new quantities. Okay, so the new velocity is double. So when it is double, okay, the part it will no longer be in this part. It will only follow this elliptical part when the velocity is equal to this. But now that the velocity has been double, it will be different. Okay, so that is actually what we will find. Okay, we will find the new part. Okay, finding the new part. The new part, it's all based on the new velocity, okay? But since we have to use, new, we have to find the new part, we will use equation two, okay? Equation two below, okay? But also, h square upon p uh, square, dpdr, it's equal to f. Uh, what hasn't changed okay when uh, the particle is moving in the new part this force this force did not change so the force will always be given by this quantity which is mu by r square okay so that is what is happening so h square it will also be a new quantity h dash okay similarly instead of p square i will be writing it as p dash dp dash upon dr Okay, so this one will be the new part, okay, which I can write down, p dash square, uh, dp dash dr, okay, I can keep it as it is, but the force did not change, so I can still use mu by r square. Okay, and also how do we find this, uh, what p dash is, or what h dash is? Because remember that h dash, it's always constant. So h dash, again, we can use equation uh, four, okay, which states that h equal pb, but over here will be p dash, v dash, and b. At b, p dash, it will be equal to b. So v dash, it will be equal to vb dash. Okay, we can actually substitute it over here. So we'll be getting 2b root mu upon a. But we need the square. So h dash square, it will be equal to 4b square mu upon a. So that is what is happening. So we can substitute it over here. So if you substitute it, you will be getting this. Mu and mu will get cancelled. So you will be having something that looks like this dp dash upon p dash square okay i can 
uh, sorry h dash by pq okay if you notice okay it should be pq okay and over here i can separate the variables which i will be getting one by r square dr now what do we have to do so this one is the differential equation we can integrate it to get the new part okay so we can integrate if you integrate this one you will be getting minus uh, 1 upon 2 p dash square and over here if you integrate it you will be getting minus 1 upon r plus a constant of integration which i will denote it with c okay so now we need to find this new uh, this constant of integration again we will have to use at b okay so that is what is happening and b r it will be equal to k and p dash again it is equal to p dash will be equal to b therefore okay what will we get over here uh, so we will be getting b square upon a and over here minus 1 upon 2b square equal to minus 1 upon a plus c which we can write it down as okay 2 and this one will get cancelled b square and b square so c it will be equal to uh, minus 2 by a plus 1 by a so you'll be getting c equal minus 1 by a then what can we do we can substitute the c again over here to get the part therefore over here will become minus 1 by a so actually we can cancel all the minus signs so we'll be getting this okay so therefore i can just write it down plus so this is the new part okay but this new part we have to show that it is a hyperbola since we are using pr equations again we will have to refer to what we discussed in the beginning okay about pr equations so this one okay i'll just write it again okay i can uh, do it like this Okay, I can cancel these two, so I'll be getting 2b square upon a, p dash square, equal 1 by r plus 1 upon a. If you refer to what we did before, okay, when discussing about PR equations of hyperbola, about the near branch and the far branch, you notice that this term should be equal to 1. Okay, so we can multiply both sides by a. Okay, multiply both sides by a you will be having this a upon r plus 1 okay so we can already conclude that it will be a hyperbola the near branch of the hyperbola but we can easily write this one like this okay we can write it as root 2 p whole thing square upon p dash square equal 2 times a upon 2 by r plus 1 so which is of the form uh, p dash square upon p dash square equal 2a dash upon r plus 1 so we can easily conclude that it will be a hyperbola okay which is a hyperbola And the eccentricity of this hyperbola is e dash. It will be equal to a dash square plus b dash square upon a dash square. Okay, so this is the formula of the eccentric of a hyperbola. It's given by this. Okay, we had discussed that again. So, but what is a dash okay if you take a look at the form that i had erased over here 
it will be equal to a dash it will be a by 2 a by 2 whole thing square and b dash it will be root 2b upon a by 2 whole thing square so we can uh, write down this one as a square by 4 plus 2b square upon a square by 4 we can do some simplifications and then we are done so it will be equal to a square plus 8b square upon a square okay but remember from the very beginning we had discussed that this one it can be written as 1 sorry b square b square will be equal to a square 1 minus e square okay because the this is the formula for the eccentricity of an ellipse so this is what we are getting so we can do some cancellations again so we will be getting 9 minus 8 e square therefore e dash it will be equal to 9 minus 8 e square root over okay so this is done okay so you have to be very careful about these questions okay when finding the path you need to use a uh, suitable uh, edge okay because just like we did okay for the old part we were using edge and for the new part we were using edge dash okay but these formulas always hold okay it's just that you just need to know when to use edge when to when to change it okay until next time